Hey, and welcome to the Joey Miller Podcast. I'm Pastor Joey Miller from Champion, and I am so excited that you're joining me today. We're going to be talking about the power of one more, overcoming discouragement, that one more time, that keep going, that keep pushing on. So if you're listening today and maybe you've been dealing with discouragement or maybe you're thinking, what is the use of continuing to do what I'm doing, it doesn't feel like I'm being seen. It doesn't feel like I'm making any ground. This podcast is for you. So grab your notebook, grab your Bible, and let's jump in to a quick word of encouragement for you to push past discouragement and to do it one more time. You know, as I was thinking about the power of one more, I was thinking about how when God gives us a plan how the enemy loves to come and discourage us or rob us of our courage or spiritual strength to see that plan come to pass. And, you know, he can't he can't take you out of that plan. There's nothing that he can do to um, uh, change that plan except for if he could convince you to quit or to back off from it. And that's why discouragement is such a real thing. We see discouragement all throughout the Bible, um, you know, many times we see these mighty men of God and we forget they were real people. In fact, the book of James says, Elijah was a man just like you and me. And if you think about Elijah, you think about the amazing things that he did for the Lord. I mean, he had just seen a great victory. All of the, the prophets of Baal were uh, annihilated on a hill and on a mountain. And then he comes down the mountain and he is hit in the face with discouragement. I mean, he himself, he's sitting there and he's like, yeah, I just want to die. My life is over. And the Lord uh, gives him a kick in the pants and he's like, get back up. Like there is work to be done. Get out of your feelings, get out of your emotions, get out of your own head and let's move forward one more time. And so this is such an important topic and I just feel like it's really relevant to us today. So I want to take a look at some principles that hopefully will encourage you because we all feel this way at some point or another. There's been times in my life that I'm like, God, do you even see what I'm doing? You know, I, I, I would say, Lord, I've been getting up and, and praying and reading and doing all of the spiritual disciplines that I know to do, fasting, praying in the spirit, all of the things. And, and I feel like maybe I'm unseen or I feel like maybe I have been doing things and expecting a different result than I'm getting. And I wanna encourage you today to keep going. There is not one seed that you sow of righteousness, of right living, of honoring God, that he is not gonna bring a full harvest return to. And so we're gonna dive into the word. We're gonna take a look at a couple aspects of it, but I just wanna encourage you in that today. If you're listening and you're saying, is it worth it? Is it worth, you know, spending time during my day praying? Is God even hearing me? Yes, He is. He is hearing you, and it is a seed that is sown unto Him. You know, the word, um, the the principle actually of sowing is mentioned 116 times throughout the Bible. There is some reference to um, sowing and reaping in the Bible, and so it's specifically for sowing 116 times. And so you should be encouraged today that what you're doing uh, isn't just an act, it is a seed that you're sowing in faith. And when you have that mental change in you that you're like, you know what, it's not just uh, I'm doing this and, and if I don't see the return today, then forget it. No, you're saying this is a seed of faith. This is a seed that I'm sowing of doing good, of pleasing the Lord, of honoring God. And you will never be at a loss. God will never... Uh, leave you short. The Bible says he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So let every act that you do, that maybe you feel the discouragement coming against you, maybe you feel like no one sees you, maybe no one sees your efforts, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom and you're like, no one sees what I'm doing. This is like day in and day out of changing diapers and look at it as seed. I remember times in my life when my kids, they would get up in the middle of the night and they would be maybe coughing or sick and and I would be sitting there rocking that baby and I would be so tired and I would just be ticked off of the enemy too. I'd be like, you know what? You're trying to rob me of like sleep and rest and you're robbing this baby of health and you're trying to bring fear into my heart and I would just get mad. And so I, instead of um, staying there worried and fearful and 
uh, discouraged, I would start to pray in the spirit. I would pray over whatever child that, that I was holding. And I took that time and I changed, hopefully you're catching what I'm saying here. I took those acts in the middle of the night and changed it from just something I didn't want to do or a little act that I was doing and changed it into seed. I'm sowing seeds of faith. I'm praying. I'm using this time as a seed that I'm sowing into this child. And so, you know, the enemy, once again, he can't rob you of the plan of God. He can make you want to stop. He can make you so tired that you feel discouraged. You can feel unseen by God. But we're going to dive in today. I want to take a look at Luke chapter 5 if you're following along in your Bible. If not, you can jot it down for later. But this is the passage where Jesus is calling some of his first disciples. Power of one more. That's what we're talking about on this podcast. It says, On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gerasenet, and he saw two boats by the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the lake. And he sat down, and he taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. (laughs) And some of us are at that point. Like, look, Jesus, like, I'm tired. They were were already cleaning their nets. There was actions, uh, physical actions that they had to do. You know, they were cleaning their nets. They were getting everything situated. A lot of hard work. And now Jesus is like, let's do this again. And they're like, oh. And so they're like, you don't understand. Like we already tried this and it didn't work. It didn't yield a harvest and we're tired. And we, quite frankly, I can imagine Simon Peters being like, and I don't want to do this anymore. And so, you know, a lot of times in our life, we can get to that point of, Jesus, like, please, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. I don't feel like anything is changing. I feel like I'm stuck uh, at this place. I'm not seeing any fruit. Uh, I feel like I've been doing the right thing for a really long time now, and nothing is yielding a change or a harvest in my life. And I love this point because this is where he's saying, he's like, we've done it all night, and we haven't seen a catch. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And so he's saying, look, but if you tell me one more time, Jesus, if you say go do it one more time, I'm going to do it. And I want to encourage you in that today, not to get overwhelmed by the big picture, not to get overwhelmed by uh, the little things that you aren't seeing come to pass, but by being in a place of obedience that says, Lord, my heart is yours. And if you tell me to keep going, if you tell me uh, you know, that, that you have good things in store for me, if you tell me my family is going to be saved, if you tell me these things, I will have faith in your word. See, faith in Jesus and faith in his word is what turns our, our actions into that seed that is sown, that, that I believe that I'm sowing by faith into a harvest that, that Jesus can do something with. And it says, um, and when they had done this, uh, They had enclosed a large number number of fish and their nets were breaking. And I love this because when Jesus said to do it one more time, the harvest that they got was a supernatural multiplication of the seed that they had sown. God wants to add his super to your natural. And in the natural, a lot of times what happens is we get weary in well-doing. In fact, Galatians 6, starting in verse 8, talks about that. It says, For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. So, you know, if you're just sowing for your own good, if you're just doing things, uh, you know, without any faith attached to it, there is a corruption that comes from that, a taintedness. There's not joy. There's not peace. There's nothing good that is promised to you when you do that. It says, but those who sow from the Spirit will reap eternal life. And so he's saying, look, there's there's a reward not only here, but in heaven that you're sowing seed towards. But he says, he warns this, and we say this all the time. This is probably one of the most quoted verses that I remind myself of uh, in the Bible. It says, In Galatians 6, verse 9, Do not grow weary of doing good, for in due season you will reap a harvest if you do not quit. Or another version says, If you faint not. And I love the way this is worded, because there's going to be a moment that you feel like you just might faint. You just feel like maybe I just can't do it anymore. 
And in that moment, you know, that's when you need to pull from the spiritual strength and say, God, if you told me to do it, I'm going to keep going. You know, you quit in your mind. Your, your mental capacity quits long before your physical body can't do it anymore. If you've ever ran, there's a moment when I'm running and I'm just tired. And in my head, if I decide in that moment I can't go anymore, then the race is over for me. I might as well just walk to the finish line. But if you can override that desire to quit, that weariness, that wanting to faint, if you can override that, you're gonna find that there is a little bit more that you can dig deeper to. There's a a depth to you that you could pull from, especially in the spirit realm, that you say, you know what, one more time, God, I'm gonna get up tomorrow, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna reach out to that person one more time. I'm gonna witness one more time. I'm gonna give my best today one more time, and you'll see that God will bring a harvest. So there's different elements of keeping keeping uh, up with what God has called you to do, not fainting. And I like to say it like this, that, there, that when you decide and make a decision, and that's what it is, it's a decision that you make, a predetermined decision that I am going to be disciplined, a predetermined decision that I don't care if I don't see anything, I'm going to keep doing the things that I know to do every day. It's the little things the little deposits every day, the things that maybe uh, you don't want to do, the things that maybe you feel like no one's seeing. It's those very little things. Think about it. It's like gold nuggets that you're depositing in your day that you will reap a harvest from. So the enemy wants you to quit. So what do you do? You do the very opposite. Whenever I feel like the enemy wants me to do something, I go into another gear and I do the very opposite of what he's trying to discourage me from. Because I'm like, okay, I'm taking this as a hint that if I'm feeling discouragement, then my breakthrough is probably right around the corner. And so keep showing up. And I say it like this, when you show up, when you continue to show up, when you continue to do the things that maybe you don't want to do, when you continue to push yourself a little bit further, there's going to be a moment, a moment in your life where you grow up where you mature to the things of God. James talks about there's a a maturing that happens when we have to persevere through different things in life. So every time you decide to show up daily in the little things, there is a growing and a maturing that happens in your life. Did you know that just because you've been a Christian for a long time doesn't mean that you're spiritually mature? That you could profess that you're a Christian. You can go to church every Sunday for year after year after year. But if you're not making the daily deposits, chances are that you're stunted in your spiritual growth. And the enemy is like, that's fine. You keep going to church because you're not going to do anything for the kingdom of God. Meanwhile, those that that get up, they show up, they can grow. You can see a Christian that's been saved a year and they devote themselves to the daily disciplines that God calls us to versus someone who's been a Christian for 50 years that doesn't even crack open their Bible. And and you're going to see a different level of spiritual maturity between the two so keep showing up and there is a growth that will happen in you that you're slowly becoming more and more like Jesus like Colossians says and as you're becoming every time you make that decision to do what you don't want to do every time you make that decision that I'm not just I'm not just cleaning the house I'm cleaning it for my family is unto the Lord every decision that you make is for God and you and you know what you come to a point where you say I have, to, I have to really decide that it doesn't matter if I get affirmation from anyone else. This is between me and the Lord. And that's a precious seed that's sown in that moment. And then so after you grow up, you know, there's going to be a moment where your harvest breaks forth. And you are going to have that, that fishnet kind of anointing when Jesus says one more time. And you're going to actually uh, blow up. That there is going to be a point in your life that everything starts to come together. There's going to be a breakthrough. There's going to be a season of your life that you get to enjoy. And, you know, a lot of people want the harvest. They want the the boat full of fish, but they don't want to do what it has taken years for some people to do to get to that point. We want the quick turnaround on our harvest. But if you keep showing up, there is going to be a point that you blow up in the aspect of every seed that you've sown, you're going to get a supernatural multiplied harvest back into your life for that when Jesus blesses you it is going to be a blessing that you can't deny a boat sinking net breaking kind of harvest that is going to come into your life maybe you're believing for a financial breakthrough and you've been sowing seed and you're like look this is dumb like I'm just going to quit now because nothing's happening 
The enemy wants you to back off of your seed. He wants you to stop doing the very little thing by faith that is going to get you your breakthrough. Keep sowing. There's going to be a harvest that is going to come your way. And the third thing is you're going to you're going to glow up. There's going to be a time in your life where you are like, wow, like I didn't even realize what God was doing in me in those seasons. And now I can continue to sow seed. You're going to continue to grow. You're going to continue this cycle of sowing because you're going to be like one more time, one more time. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to keep doing, I'm going to pray that prayer one more time. I'm going to, I'm going to sow by faith one more time. And, and so don't give up now. Don't quit now. Your harvest is closer than ever before the power of one more so what has god been asking you to do maybe what what have you been doing for years that you're feeling discouragement in that you're feeling uh like that you don't have anything to offer you're feeling unseen maybe you're feeling like you're not contributing anymore take that thought and say no in jesus name if god called me to it i'm going to have the perspective that i'm going to do it with everything that is in me i'm going to do it by faith and i will reap a harvest if I faint not. So one more time, don't you dare give up. There is a, a breakthrough waiting for you right on the other side of one more time. I'll talk to you soon on the Joey Miller Podcast.